Well, good evening to you all, my Victory Through Faith the Church family and friends. It's Pastor Jay. I speak and I decree the blessing of the Lord over your lives. I pray that all is going well with you, and I pray that all will go well for you. Hey, I've got a great word for you today. Y'all know I say that every week because I believe it every week. I believe that the Spirit of God gives me something great to share with you. And so I'm looking forward to sharing with you. Victor fam, this is a special word I've got for you today because it's something that will piggyback off of what we talked about Sunday. And uh, well, before I get into that, let's just go before the Lord in prayer. Let's make sure that the Holy Spirit approves and is involved in what we're doing this evening. And then we'll launch right into our midweek message for this week. Father God, I just thank you for another chance, another opportunity to teach your word with accuracy and simplicity. I pray that every person who needs to be exposed to this teaching will be exposed to it. I pray for wisdom and revelation knowledge to flow freely. We bind up distractions, we bind up hindrances, we bind up anything that the enemy would attempt to do to drive a wedge between us and your word. And I thank you, Father God, that as your word goes forth, revelation knowledge flows freely i pray that every person who is exposed to this teaching will receive at least one revelatory word from you that we can apply to our lives and experience divine changes in your son jesus name we pray amen 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 well let's get right into it i want to go ahead and share with you what i want to uh or what the spirit of god gave me to uh share with you today uh you know on, on sundays after we finish with the main message and we dismiss our online crew, uh, we have something we call <clears throat> afterflow. And afterflow is when uh, we dismiss the online crew or we, we cease the recording that we post to our YouTube page. And we just take questions or comments or we basically commune around the word that went forth that day. Well, this past Sunday after the message, the Spirit of God instructed us to go deeper in prayer that uh, we typically have about 20 minutes of intercession before we start service on Sundays. And what Holy Spirit was communicating to us is that we needed to go deeper in prayer. Uh, I believe he was implying that we need to alter how we pray in order to tap into the power of God. Uh, not necessarily saying that we were in error the way we were praying prior to what he said. I believe what he's doing is he's showing us how to pivot into uh, staying in alignment with his will. And he wants us to ensure that he can use us in these last days. Uh, he was implying that we need to alter how we pray in order to tap into his power. Now, in light of what he communicated, I believe that we, and when I say we, I'm talking about the Victory Through Faith Church family. Uh, whether you're a member of the church or you rock with us consistently online through our YouTube page or however it is that you're affiliated with us, if you believe that Victory Through Faith Church and if you believe that God has called me to speak into and pour into your life, then what I'm about to share with you you today applies to you. Uh, God communicated that we have entered into a season, what I believe he is uh, referring to as power preparation. That's what the title of this lesson is a reference to power preparation. And so uh, it reminded me of something that the spirit of God had done earlier. I actually taught, I think I taught around these lines. It wasn't called power preparation, but the the uh, information that I'm going to share with you today, I shared some of it, a vast majority of it earlier this year, I think around July or August, maybe a little earlier. It wasn't titled power preparation, but it was dealing with power and, and prayer. And the spirit of God reminded me of that. And he showed me that this year, over the course of several months, uh, the spirit of God communicated to me concerning our need for prayer. He showed me that 
Well, he spoke actually five separate times, or he communicated to my heart on five separate occasions. Actually, it's probably more if I were to go to my journal, because I keep a journal. Anytime the Spirit of God communicates something to me, I write down what he said, and not something fancy. I've got a spiral notebook. Sometimes I write it on legal pads. Sometimes I write it just on a scrap sheet of paper, and I'll insert it to my journal later. But uh, I, I note, I date, and I timestamp everything the Spirit of God communicates to me. And so I've got five separate occasions between the months of April and July where the Spirit of God spoke specifically about our need for prayer. And so I'm going to share each one of those words with you. They're, they're five words, but they're all brief. I just believe it'll set the tone for what God is telling us and talking to us about. So the first thing that the Spirit of God communicated to me or the first thing that we'll share for this lesson this is what he said. He said, pray for an outpouring. An outpouring means a flood or a cascade. I've got that in brackets. The Spirit of God allowed me to define that outpouring by a flood or a bracket or a cascade in brackets. So he said, pray for an outpouring of God's spirit so that he may equip his people for his end time work. This is a communication that the Spirit of God gave to me in April, actually April the 5th of this year. He said, pray for an outpouring of God's spirit so that he may equip his people for his end time work. So from that alone, we see that God desires to equip us for his end time work by his spirit. And Holy Ghost was letting us know that we need to pray for that outpouring. We need to pray for that flood. We need to pray for that cascade. Uh, another term that's synonymous with outpouring is deluge. You know, the Spirit of God told us, Victory Fam, in the end, at the last quarter of 2019, that there was a wave coming and we needed to ride that wave by faith. Well, I also believe that what Holy Ghost is communicating with us now is tied into that wave. He's saying, Whatever the wave of the world is, the Bible says wherever sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Whatever wave that hits the world, as long as we're operating in the spirit and in power, we'll ride that wave by faith and it won't negatively impact us. We might have to change some things. We might have to alter the way we do things, but we won't be negatively impacted by it. So the first thing he said in April, on April the 5th, was to pray for an outpouring, a flood, a cascade of God's spirit so that he may equip his people for his end time work. The second thing he said was in May, May the 9th of this year. And he said, pray for power. Just that simple. Not a lot of fluff to it. Not a lot. It, a lot of times when God speaks to you, it's not going to be very wordy. Now, there are sometimes God speaks to me. It'll fill up a page. There are other times when he'll speak to me and it won't even fill up the line of a page. And that's what he said. Uh, on May the 9th, he said, pray for power. I communicated that to the church in July. If you remember, pray for power. The third thing I heard the Holy Spirit communicate to me was this. And this was when I knew I needed to pay attention because Holy, Holy Ghost has rarely communicated to me this way. The third thing he said was in on June the 30th. He said, I remind you again. Pray for power. Now, listen to me. Listen to me clearly. Uh, God communicates to me uh, pretty regularly if I position myself to hear from him. And what I mean by positioning myself to hear from him is that I believe God is always speaking. We're just always not still enough or quiet enough to hear him. And so it's easy. I've been in positions where I've prayed in the spirit for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and then got up and walked away, not even giving God time to respond, not even giving God time to communicate to me what he was talking about, not even giving God time to share his heart with me. Yeah, I built myself up on my most holy faith, but I might have missed out on a divine message from God. And so God is always speaking. We're just not always in a position to hear. Uh, and what he said in May, May the 9th, was pray for power. And then in June, when he said June 30th, over a month later, he said, I remind you again, as if I had not paid attention to what he said before. He said, I remind you again, pray for power. Now. When God tells me something one time, I'm always amazed by the fact that he speaks to us and speaks to me. 
because that never gets old to me. I never get to a place to where I'm like, oh, God talks to me all the time. I'm good with it. No, it always amazes me. It always blesses me how he communicates to me. When he said that in May, I was blessed by it. However, when he reiterated it in June, I remind you again, pray for power. That's one of the very few times I can count on my hand the amount of times that the Holy Spirit has reiterated something to me that he said earlier, almost verbatim. He said, I remind you again, pray for power. Now, remember the first thing he said was pray for an outpouring of God's spirit so that he may equip his people for his end time work. The fourth thing he said, and this was July the 8th. So on April the 5th, he said, pray for an outpouring of God's spirit so that he may equip his people for his end time work. On May the 9th, he said, pray for power. On June the 30th, he said, I remind you again, pray for power. On July the 8th, he said, the outpouring is upon us. That's what the Holy Spirit communicated to me. He said, the outpouring is upon us. The flood, the cascade, the deluge, the outpouring is upon us. Now, early in May, he said, pray for power. The fifth thing that I want to share with you that he said and the main reason why I'm sharing with you this lesson series or this lesson today is because on July the 16th, he's reiterated pray for power. So that's three times where he's made that statement. But the way he gave it to me, he expanded on what pray for power meant because he said pray for power. Then he said, I remind you again, pray for power. Then he said the outpouring is upon us. And then he further uh expounded on what he meant when he said pray for power he said pray in order for power to manifest i'll say that again he said pray in order for power to manifest and that's so important is because when we hear pray for power it's easy to think well lord give me your power i want your power lord we're going to pray for your power we have his power we have his power what he was articulating was that I don't want you to pray to me to get power. I want you to pray in order for the power that I've given you to manifest. Manifest means to appear or to become apparent. So he's saying you got power. If you are a child of God, you've got power. I don't want you to pray for me to give you power. I want you to pray for the power that I have given you to manifest. And I believe that that's what he wants us to do on Sunday's Victory Fam. I believe that he wants us to set aside dedicated time to pray for his power to manifest, not just in our lives, not just in our ministry, but in the church, the big C church in the world. I believe he wants us to pray out his will in the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I believe he desires for us to pray out his ordained will in heaven into the earth. Amen. I really believe that with all my heart. So he's saying pray in order for power to manifest. Now, when we talk about power that we're talking about that Greek word dunamis, which means miraculous power or miraculous ability. I believe that God's going to confirm his word. He's already doing it now. I believe that God will continue to confirm his word with signs following because people are very agnostic now. People are very uh, anti-God now because man is rapidly becoming his own God, little g. And so we think we don't need God. We think God doesn't apply to our day-to-day -day lives. This world is rapidly pulling away from the principles that it was founded upon. This country is rapidly pulling away from the principles that it was founded upon. And I believe that God's not going to try to convince people anymore He's just going to perform the works through signs, miracles, and those that believe, believe those that don't want. But you won't have an excuse. Jesus said, hey, I understand y'all got some religious hangups and you might not believe that I am who I say I am. But he, in essence, and I'm paraphrasing all this, in essence, he said, but believe the works. If you don't believe me, check out my resume. He said, look at what I've done. If you don't believe me, believe for the very works sake. Look at what has been accomplished. And I believe that we're entering. We're in. Yeah, we're there. We're there. We're there because you said the outpouring is upon us, Lord. So I declare that we're there now in the name of Jesus. I believe that we have entered into that place, that ordained space of God where he's confirming his word with signs following. 
What is he confirming? His word. He's not confirming our emotions. He's not confirming our feelings. He's not confirming our fears. He's not confirming our worries. He's not confirming our anxiety. He's not confirming our pressure. He confirms his word with signs following. Glory to God. So just to recap, we need to. he told us to pray for an outpouring of God's spirit so that he may equip his people for his end time work. That was April the 5th. He said to pray for power. That was May the 9th. He said, I remind you again, for, pray for power. That was June the 30th. Uh, he, on July the 8th, he said the outpouring is upon us. And then on July 16th, he said, pray in order for power to manifest. Now, that begs the question, what are we specifically preparing or what are we specifically praying for? If the title of this lesson is power preparation, what do you think we're praying for? Power. What specifically are we praying and preparing for? We are praying and preparing for power. Power to what? Three things. Power to be, power to have, power to do. Oh, I'll say it this way. We'll say it alphabetically. Power to be, power to do, power to have. We are praying for power to be. That means to be who God created us to be. We are praying for power to do. That means to do what God called us to do. And we are praying for power to have. That means to have what God wants us to have. That requires great trust because that means I believe that God as my father wants me to have better than, ooh, that's good. I believe that God as my father wants me to have better than what I desire. And so I pray for the power to be made manifest for me to have what God wants me to have. That means I'm not going to be so focused on give me, give me, give me. I'm going to be more focused on give me, give me, give me. I give me to you. I give me to you. I give me to you. I give me to you, God. And I trust you with me. I give me to you and I trust you with me because I believe that you want me to do better than what I want. There are some things I desire. There are some things I want to achieve. There are some goals I want to accomplish. However, I believe that God wants me to achieve and accomplish things far greater than what I desire to accomplish or achieve. So instead of saying, give me, give me, give me, I give me, I give me, I give me to you, Lord God. So we are praying for power to be. Power to do, power to have, power to be who God created us to be in Christ Jesus, power to do what God called us to do by the power of his spirit and power to have what God wants us to have. Those things that he has laid up in his grace for by grace are you saved through faith. Everything we need is in God's grace. We receive it by faith. Now, as I get ready to wrap this up. And I know you might say, wrap it up. Yeah, I, I came on a mission today. I need to share this with you to lay the foundation for where we're going on Sundays and to prep us for what we need to do moving forward. Now, we're, we know we need, we're praying for power to be, power to do, power to have. Not just us, but the body of Christ. Yeah, our local victory family. But we're also praying for the body of Christ to receive the power to be, to receive the power to do, to receive the power to have, not to ask for it, but to receive it and activate it because the power is already there. I'm about to show you that in a moment. We already have the power. We need to believe it, receive it and act on it or act on him to be more uh, precise. So. In order to do this, we need power scriptures. We'll probably look at these Sunday during our prayer time. Uh, I really could go through the Bible and pick out way more than what I've given you. But for the sake of where we are and what I have, uh, the Spirit of God gave me four scriptures for us to read and meditate on so that we can uh, build ourselves up on the power that God has already given us and we can prepare power preparation, prepare ourselves to walk in this power that God has ordained for us to walk in. So the first place we'll start is 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 6 and 7, and I'll be reading from the New King, New King James Version of the Bible. It says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love and of a sound mind. So God has already given us power. He gave us power when he gave us his spirit. Amen. Uh, Jesus said, I believe over in Luke 24, he says 
tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Well, that power from on high was a reference to Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit descended on those men and men and women in the upper room and they were filled with the spirit and began to speak in tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. They received the power from God. They were endued with power from on high and God has given us his spirit and his spirit is the spirit of power. Hallelujah. So that's one scripture you can read and meditate on. You're not asking God to give you power. You are believing, receiving and operating in the power that he has given us by and through his spirit. Now, the next three power passages are all in Ephesians. And I believe it would do you good to read these passages every day. You want to get it in your spirit. We learn that the word is spiritual nutrition, it's spiritual fuel for our faith. So it would do you good to read these scriptures every day day, at least five days a week. I know we kind of like to relax on the weekend and break the monotony of what we do through the week. So at least Monday through Friday, if I were you and you were me, I would read these scriptures every single day. The first power passage from Ephesians is in chapter one is verses 15. Well, let me give you the whole thing and then I'll read through it. Ephesians chapter one, verses 15 through 21. Uh, the, the, the next one is Ephesians chapter three, verses 14 through 21. And the final one is Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 through 18. Now, I'll read Ephesians one and Ephesians three. And then you already know to read Second Timothy one, six and seven. And then I'll allow you to read Ephesians six, 10 through 18 on your own time. But let's look at Ephesians. Remember, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Starting at verse 15 of chapter one, it says, therefore, I also after I, this is Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. He said, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding that refers to spiritual enlightenment, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the here we go. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? So his power is great towards those who believe. And if you believe, you receive. And if you receive, you decree. So we have to believe that God has given us his power. We have to receive his power for us personally. And we have to decree and confess that power. That's what activates it. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 19 again. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. His power is great toward those who believe. Now you got to believe that power. You got to receive that power as your right now reality and you have to begin to confess and decree that power. When you believe, receive and decree, you'll begin to act in line with what you believe, receive and decree. Amen. Now, in Ephesians chapter three, and it will do you good to read these every day. Like I said earlier, don't try to understand everything the first time you read it. There's power in repetition. I read the scriptures all the time and I read the same scriptures all the time over and over. And I can read a scripture today and get fresh insight from it that I did not have 10 years ago, five years ago, five months ago, five days ago. And so I want you to think of the scriptures as food for you. You don't eat once and you got it and you're full. You have to eat every day. If you want to be healthy, if you want to grow, you have to eat every day. And so I want you to eat these scriptures every single day. No, you might not understand every single word. You might not understand every single verse, but I guarantee you the spirit of God who is within you will give you light and enlightenment and revelation about what you're reading. And he'll give it to you in a practical way. 
that you can apply to your life. Amen. Now, in Ephesians chapter three, verses 14 through 21, it says, for this reason, I bow my knees. When it says I bow my knees, what is Paul talking about? Prayer. So we can read it this way. For this reason, I pray to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because we prep by power or we prep through prayer. Prayer is power prep. That's good. We see that in the life of Jesus. Anytime he needed to recharge, anytime he needed to get ready for what was to come, he would he would get alone and pray. So we need to build a habit of doing the same thing, getting alone, spending time with God and prepping for power through prayer, prepping for power through prayer. It says for this reason, Ephesians chapter three, verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. So his spirit is in our inner man. That's your spirit. His spirit is in your spirit. Hallelujah. Verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. How does he do it? According to the power that works in us. Hallelujah. So his power works in us. And when it works in us to him, be the glory in the church to him, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. His power works in us. But what we have to do or however, what we have to do is yield to it. Allow his power to move, allow his power to move us. Believe that his power is in us and activate it. Like he told Timothy, stir up the gift that's in you through the laying on of my hands. You've got the gift in you. You got power in you. Stir it up. And of course, the last. So you read Second Timothy, chapter one, verses six through seven. You read Ephesians, chapter one, verses 15 through 21. You read Ephesians, chapter three, verses 14 through 21. And lastly, you can read Ephesians, chapter six, verses 10 through 18. I'll let you read that on your own, but I do want to read verse 18 for you. It says, well, let's go up to 17. It says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always without praying, always praying, always praying, always praying, always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Hallelujah. So we got to pray always. We got to pray always. Verse 10 tells us be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So we're praying always so we can be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power that works through us mightily when we yield to the flow of Holy Spirit. So my victory fam, we'll see these verses again. We will begin to read and quote and declare these on Sundays during our intercessory time because we want to use these scriptures to lay the foundation for the move of God that I believe he wants to do in and through us. And if you're not part of Victory Through Faith Church family, but you watch this from time to time and you've been stirred up by what you've heard today, you don't have to be a part of our local assembly to do this. If you're a believer, you got the Holy Spirit in you. You can quote these same scriptures. You can read these same scriptures. You can get in prayer with God and you can ask him to make his power manifest in your life. You don't have to be part of us as long as you're part of the body of Christ. Amen. Because I believe God wants to use us to prepare the way for his son to return. And he's going to do that by bringing as many people in as he can. And he's going to use signs, miracles and wonders to accomplish it. Amen. Glory to God. Well, that's all I've got for you today. I love you. I appreciate you spending time with me. And remember this. You are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service and your success is in God's word. I love you. Be blessed.
in Jesus' name.